In this tutorial, I will show you how to deform meshes along a spline using Spline Architect. I will also cover most of the features related to mesh deformation. We start by pressing the Create Spline button to make a spline. Here we have a road we want to deform. Just parent it to the spline. You can now move, rotate, scale or duplicate it directly on the spline. As you can see, the road isn't centered. We can fix this by clicking the To Center button. If you want to align deformations, you can set the snap length value. If you press a control point, you can change the effects of deformations, rotate, scale, contrast and more. If you don't want to deform the game object, set the type to follower. Now it follows the spline but doesn't get deformed. You can also set it to none if you want to ignore the spline completely. Spline Architect can also deform any mesh inside a mesh collider. Just add the mesh collider to the game object. You can also enable something called Autotype. It lets game objects switch between follower and deformation automatically. For example, if two control points are in a straight line, objects between them with Autotype will become followers. If you see small gaps between followers, just increase the spline resolution. You can also deform prefabs that have a hierarchy of game objects. Because of this, you can also deform game objects that use LOD groups. If you select the spline, you will see the transform is not centered on the spline. This can make it harder to scale and rotate. Click the Select and Center Spline button to fix this. The deformation setting controls how meshes are handled. The default is Save in Build. Meshes are generated by working in the editor, but when building the game they are stored in the build itself. You can also choose to generate meshes during scene load, save them in the scene file, or use Do Nothing to handle everything yourself. With the component setting, you can remove all spline and spline object components in the build and keep only the deformed meshes. If you need the spline for animations or other behavior, set it to active. You can also set it to inactive. The components stay active before the start function, then they get inactivated. Perfectly if you want to generate meshes during scene load. The spline type option changes how the spline works. The static spline has no cached normals, so it uses less memory. It's also easier to work with and great for roads or similar shapes. But it doesn't work well for complex curves like loops. In those cases, switch to dynamic. You can also snap deformations by clicking the snap button. It will snap to all control points on the spline. Click it again and it will snap to any follower or empty game object instead. That's all for this tutorial. 
If you have any questions, write a comment below or join the Discord. Thank you for watching.